Where to start on this one? Wow, uh, it's a lot to take in and soak in after time. I'm still trying to chew it all up. I'm convinced I need another viewing to be able to gather my true thoughts and feelings on this one. So I'm going to start with the easy stuff first, the characters and performance. Ben Affleck is just one force of power as Batman. His fight scenes were just incredible. At one point I felt like I was playing the game hearing that punch sound with every blow. <laughs> I couldn't help feel that Jeremy Irons' Alfred often overshadowed Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne though, you know, with his perfect casting and an understated performance that just became the best part of the film for me. Poor Henry Cavill is not given much to work with other than to look angry and repeatedly save Lois Lane. When you are getting yourself in that much trouble over and over again throughout the movie, it is really hard to like the character. But luckily they didn't dent the other female character. Now the world seemed angry over the fact that Gal Gadot was too skinny to be Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman is strong. Well, this is exactly how Gal Gadot portrayed her. A strong woman in mind and body who is a pivotal part in the helping to defeat the bad guy. Which reminds me, I can't imagine anyone who managed to escape the trailers, but if you manage to avoid that big fat spoiler filled trailer, then I suggest you just shut your ears for a few seconds. The marketing failed this movie. It really did fail us showing Doomsday in that big fat spoiler trailer. <laughs> As you know, that moment in the movie would have been a really pleasant surprise and it would have been an epic one at that. Instead, the film just builds up to something that we know is coming, leaving us just unimpressed in the climactic moments. And last but not least, well, maybe least, is Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. Now, I was all on board and open to his performance as Lex Luthor. You know, from the trailers, I could see he was going to be interesting, and he certainly is that. I wanted so much to like his performance, but I felt like I was watching a psychotic version of Mark Zuckerberg, you know, which is actually quite fitting, seeing as Zuckerberg and Lufa are both in charge of big, high-tech companies. I just felt the performance could have been reined in just a bit to result in a more sinister approach, but, but then I'd probably be saying right now, Oh, he's playing that Facebook guy again. I have to give credit to the music. Both Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL have signed, sealed, delivered. Though at times I did feel like I was listening to the Mad Max soundtrack, you know, which isn't so much a bad thing because that is one cracking awesome soundtrack, but it just would have been nice for this film to have a little bit of variation. Saying that I was completely in love with Wonder Woman's motif, you know, it was enough to get you sitting up in your chair waiting for her to just pull out some badass action. Now, this is some heavy stuff, you know, some parts of the film are rather dark and disturbing. I'd think twice before taking the little ones to see this, as there were moments where even I felt like a vulnerable child holding back the tears, wanting her mummy. You have the build up to the ultimate moment of Batman vs Superman, but you also have a lot of subtext to chew on. Falsified terrorism, 9-11 imagery, influence of industries on politics, the purpose of faith in society, and that is just a few that I mentioned. And even though there was so much to take in and it felt pretty heavy, I felt like I was eating a bite of cake and wasn't allowed to eat the rest. Fans of the comics will love all the easter eggs in the film, but at the same time I felt like I wanted more from it. It felt like it wanted to go to some really dark places, but was restricted by the 12A rating. Something always felt like it was missing or parts didn't piece together well. Therefore, I have faith that the 15 rated director's cut will have what the film needs to feel complete. On paper, everything works. The script, the themes, the music, all great. Yet something isn't quite working. This just feel most true to its original source material and, you know, I could say moments seemed like it was page for page, but it just doesn't 
feel like the escapism most viewers want from a superhero movie. It does start to feel a bit like a jungle sale. Everything starts off really neat and then by the end the tidy display is just it's just demolished. Visually the film is super impressive though there was times where I started to forget what colour actually looked like. Structurally, it became cluttered. Some questionable decisions that have been made with this film, you know, they felt like they had the time to put in origin scenes that the majority of viewers have seen several times before and, you know, know it like the back of their hand, yet they didn't wish to explore moments that have never been visited on the big screen before. You know, there is unvisited moments in comic books sitting on a shelf right now shouting, pick me, pick me. Now, like I said at the beginning of the video, I feel like I need another watch of this film and I will do. I'm sitting on the fence between a good and bad movie, but my body weight seems to be falling into the good side. At the same time, it feels like a film that you won't want to revisit too often, unlike the Nolan Batman films or even Burton's Batman. But the one thing the film has done, and this might have been the studio's idea all along, is it's got me bloody excited for Justice League. Give me Wonder Woman, give me Flash, give me Aquaman. So this film was the starter, the soup that might have just been a bit too bleak, but what it does do is it gets you excited for the main course and dessert. Did you enjoy Batman vs Superman? Pop your thoughts in the comment box below. Be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, hit the Facebook, hit the Twitter button and please do subscribe because I'm Batman!